What's going on everyone? I'm Ivan and on this video we're going to cover what it is to train to failure. So if this sounds interesting to you, let's get to the point. The short answer is that you're taking an exercise to the point where your muscles cannot do that exercise anymore. But it's not that simple. So let's get some common phrases that you'll probably hear. Going to true failure, smashing the like button, and going past failure. Second, when we talk about failure, we're talking about muscular failure and not cardiovascular failure. It could kind of be the same thing, but don't get it confused. Example number one, if you're sprinting and you sprint as fast as you can for as long as you can and you can't go no more, that's not called failure. Now you can call it failure if you want to, but in the fitness, we don't use failure in that sense. Example number two, now the way we use failure is let's say I'm doing a bench press and I'm not gonna count my repetitions. I'm just gonna go as, I'm just gonna try to do as many repetitions as possible. I'm gonna go to the point where I can't even lift the bar off my chest anymore. That's when you start reaching failure. So what does that look like? you tried sprinting, but sprinting sucks. It's very taxing on the nervous system, the cardiovascular system, the entire body. You're gonna feel very tired. If you wanna train to failure, you're gonna need will, work ethic, and determination because it's very hard to train this way every day, but it's not impossible. The biggest problem when training to failure is using improper technique or just when you get so tired that you're not able to lift the weight back up or bring it back down. For example, I'm doing bench press, I can't bring the bench back up, I can't bring that bar back up, who's gonna be there to help me get that bar off my chest. Going into the gym and doing every set to failure is not recommended. You could train like that if you want to, but not recommended because you're trying to get stronger. So if you get tired right off the back on your first set, there's no way you could increase more weight uh, on your next set and the following set. And then let's say 12 sets later, you're probably gonna be very tired if you were taking all your sets to failure. If you do do it, just know that you're gonna need more recovery time because you're tearing the muscle more, plus you're straining your nervous system and just your mental, you're gonna need some time off. You're gonna need more time off, you're gonna need more rest, more sleep in order to recover from working to failure the entire time. What I recommend is that you do your last, you know, your, maybe your last or your last two sets to failure on a given exercise. For example, you're doing the flat bench press, you do four sets. Instead of taking your first and second set to failure, you take maybe your third and fourth set to failure. And then when you get to the incline bench, you're gonna do another four sets on the incline bench. Instead of doing that first and second set to failure, you do probably just your third and fourth set to failure. You could probably just do the fourth set if you wanted to to failure, but that's a way where you could use going to failure. Back to our common phrases of going to true failure and going past failure. The term true failure, it has been a thing just because there's people that will go to failure because they think they might've been going to failure but it all depends on the individual. It depends on his will, his work ethic, and his determination. It's very, it's more of a mental thing when you go to failure. It's painful. You don't want to get there. It's, it's, some people try. Like I like going to failure. Yeah, I enjoy that that burning sensation, that pump. Uh, but some people they just don't like it. However, the more experience you get, the better you'll get at knowing what true failure is for you. Past failure is AKA force reps. So all this is is that you're doing a set and then you have maybe a spotter help you take the next, uh, do the next few reps, or you rest for let's say a, a quick second or two seconds, catch your breath, and then you pump out another two reps. The last thing I wanna cover two things. Just because you run out of breath or you run out of oxygen while you're working out, doesn't mean you've reached true failure. If you don't breathe properly doing your exercises, then you might not reach actually true failure. You may just be out of oxygen, causing you to fatigue a lot faster. But like I said before, the more you lift, the more experience you'll get at doing this. And lastly, pausing for you know one or two seconds so you could execute a force rep is good, but if you start pausing for maybe five to 10 seconds and then you lose that build up lactic acid and all that, then you're really not 
going past failure at that point. You're actually now rested. So you now gotta reach failure all over again. So if you're going to do those force reps, I recommend that you use a spotter or if you're going to rest is a quick second and then you pump those next two. All right, that was it. Straight to the point on how to train to failure. If you would like to know more, check out my homepage where you can see similar videos like this one and subscribe if you like what you see. Hey, if this video was helpful, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, comment below and let me know what you guys would like to see next. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all next time. What's going on? Damn, let me see. Some of my boxes there. What? Work from home stuff, right? If you would like to know more, check out my homepage where you can see similar video. Chunky. Don't let this shirt fool you. I'm a chunk chunk. I think I'm ready. I didn't uh, I didn't bring my makeup artist today, so I'm doing this without makeup, y'all.